Hey Reader Pops. I want to read some Christmas books. These are the four that I just recently bought. I went book shopping for them in this video and it was really fun. So the ones that I bought are All I Want for Christmas by Maggie Knox. This is the one where they're in Nashville and I'm so stuffed up. They're on a reality singing show and the people fall in love with them. So they have to fake date. I got So This Is Christmas by Jenny Holiday. This is the one that is a third in a series and I haven't read the first ones, but people told me that the first two are actually cute. So I have to go buy those first, I guess, which is just an excuse to buy more Christmas books, which I'm not that mad about because they're so cute. This one is the young adult one I bought, Blame It on the Mistletoe by Beth Garrett. I'm pretty sure this is the one that everyone commented sounded exactly like the plot of a movie called The Holiday, I think, but she switches places with one of her British fans because she's like influencer, apparently, and she falls in love with a British boy, I think and something with them switching place. I don't really know. And then there's something about Mary by Cody Hall, which is just the cutest cover ever. She works on her family's Christmas farm. He works there too, I think. And then they're anonymously chatting with each other, but don't know that it's the people that they already know in real life. So these are the four that I have to choose from. They are so cute together. I can't get over it. I just want so many of these books. I started this one yesterday and I got to page 70. And so far it's good. I like it. We have single dad trope. We have different POVs and we got like a full on chapter of them just chatting back and forth, which was fun. I don't understand why they would be on a dating app anonymously. Like, I don't even know if that's a thing, but that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, it's good so far. It honestly just feels like a normal romance book. It just happens to be taking place during Christmas with kind of Christmassy vibes. I feel like it wouldn't be insane to read this book like in the fall time or after Christmas, like in January. When I edit this, it's gonna be so funny because my nose is so stuffy, but. When I edit this, it's gonna be so funny because my nose is so stuffy, but. It is hilarious. Yeah, I'm gonna keep reading this one and hopefully it's good. I can't wait to see how cheesy these are or if they're just kind of like normal romance books that happen to be Christmas. Theme. I have my bangs pulled back because it makes my hair not get oily from the moisturizer on my forehead But anyways, I have an update for you on there's something about Mary because on my main channel I'm filming a video where I wake up at 5 a.m Every day to have more time to read and see if I can read more books Which obviously the result is gonna be me reading more books because I'm reading for like two hours in the morning So because of that I got to page like 250 almost um, but this Christmas book is 400 pages which feels a little, a little excessive. And the pacing is way different than I thought it would be because you know they're talking to each other online and they're also talking to each other in person. And I thought that the date would be way towards the end of the book, but it kind of happened smack dab in the middle. And we already had the third act conflict, but it was like halfway through the book, not through the last third. So yeah, that's interesting. I also just love how much this book commits to being a Christmas book because her name is Mary and her sister's name is Holly. It's just, they're really committing and I really like that. I like the single dad trope because the kid is so cute in the book. So I really like that aspect of it. There are some word choices and some jokes where I was like, uh, not five stars, but I really like it so far. And I haven't enjoyed a cutesy little romance book in a while. So I'm grateful to this book for giving me that. Sometimes the banter is really good. I'm gonna keep reading and probably fall asleep. I would like to fall asleep, please. I hope I fall asleep. Oh, I got five hours of sleep because of this video. <laughs> but the grind don't stop it literally never stops whatever we do we will be all right these holiday wonders I finished There's Something About Mary. Also, I just thought of the title idea today while I was filming it. So if it says something like cringy or bingy or binge worthy, I don't know, something like that, kind of a series idea. I don't know. Cause I feel like the whole thing with Christmas books is that a lot of people think they're just horribly cheesy and bad, which I don't know why that's a, the case with Christmas books instead of just general rom-coms. Cause really they're just rom-coms with a Christmas setting. You know, at least that's what this one is. I don't know if you guys remember when Things We Never Got Over, this book went super viral and it was like 500 pages and I read it and I gave it two stars. Something about this book feels exactly the same because it's a small town romance. And if you love that book, then you would absolutely love this one. If you hated that book, I don't think you'd like this one. I gave this one three stars. It's not horrible. I didn't hate the dialogue. There were cute moments in this book. I really enjoyed myself. Like I feel like the scenes that she wrote were really cute. I was excited to pick it up 
pretty much every time I did until the end. I feel like it's a little too long. It's 400 pages and that's also why it reminds me of things we never got over because there's a lot of parallels. Small town, single dad trope. Is that what it is in things we never got over or is it single mom? No, it's her sister runs away. So she has to take care of her child. In this book, we also have a family member who comes back to the small town to cause a bit of trouble. Hence the extra hundred pages at the end of the book. So it's not horrible or anything. It's just very similar to that other book. So if you love that one, like I said, you'd love this. I did not hate this at all. I don't think it was that cringy or anything like that, but I don't think it was that romantic or that cute. And I definitely didn't feel very like swoony about it. I didn't really care about the characters getting together, but I liked the pink cover and the Christmas setting. Anyways, it's time for me to pick a new Christmas book. And I chose this one, Blame It on the Mistletoe by Beth Garrett. This is the young adult one that's about a social media influencer who swaps place with a British fan. And I've read 20 pages of it so far and I'm getting a little bit worried because it's just written very young. So I don't know if I should just DNF it now because then I looked it up on Goodreads and there were so many two-star reviews and I just feel like maybe this book is catered towards an audience who's like 12 years old. And usually I love young adult, but there is like a younger young adult, you know? And I'm worried that this falls into that category and I shouldn't even read it because if I judge it that harshly, it's because yeah, it's not for my age group, you know what I mean? So I kind of want to look up the age group that it's intended for, even though when you're you're an actual adult reading young adult, you know that there are going to be some things that are more immature, but this one's like insanely over the top of like trying to be quirky, which I know a thing or two about, okay? So I get it, but it's a lot. <laughs> so I'll update you because if I don't read that one, then I'm going to definitely read All I Want for Christmas by Maggie Knox because this so far seems like the most popular Christmas romance book this year and it's short like it should be seems like it should be cute actually Maybe I'll just start this one. Okay. I did decide to DNF blame it on the mistletoe Unfortunately, um, there's just no way I think if you are 9 to 13 years old, it would be a cute book for you Yeah, so I switched to all I want for Christmas and I'm on chapter 2 There's different POVs and something I will say about all three of these books that I've tried to read so far is it's so fun to read these books during the season, obviously, because they write the date. So like this date is December 1st and I'm reading this the day before December 1st. So it just feels so perfect. Like you're just enhancing your life experience by reading about your life experience romanticized. You know what I mean? And all of them are really cute. Like they all have like little designs on them and I just really appreciate it. So I'm having a lot of fun with this video so far. Hey guys, it's 5 a.m. But I'm reading All I Want for Christmas and I'm on page 184 and it's actually a pretty cute book so far. I don't know. I don't know. It's not like the craziest romance book ever. It's a typical like formulaic cheesy rom-com, but there's a little extra spark to this one in particular so far. And we're about to hit the conflict. So I'm excited to see what I think about that. May all your wishes tonight come true. Spock eating his pizza. A few days of reading at 5 a.m. later. <laughs> And I finished All I Want for Christmas by Maggie Knox, which I got to the acknowledgements and actually Maggie Knox is two authors and they have different names, but they went with the name Maggie Knox, which is a cool fun fact. It's like when we all found out that Christina Lauren was actually two authors, it was mind blowing. I think this book was a little bit better than There's Something About Mary just because there's more, there's actually a lot of conflict in this book. I feel like the drama just continued. It was one of those things where like they could just never communicate and be together. And I just wish that that was like a more common thing in romance books to just have conversations like actual adults. Cause I feel like it'd still be interesting to read that, you know, like communicating. Actually, I feel like I haven't ever read a romance book where they're having a real conversation of a back and forth of like, well, this is how I felt about this. And then, well, this is why I blah, 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 blah. It's never like that. It's always just like, they see something, they make 20 assumptions, they storm out and they don't talk to each other type of thing. That was a little annoying, but it also made me want to keep reading because I just didn't know what was going to happen. So I feel like there was like a little bit more depth in this book. This one's pretty cute as a Christmas one, but as like a general romance book, I didn't super love it or anything, but I feel like I would give this three stars. But I do feel like it's better than this. I don't know. Both were like cute in aspects. Like I really do like the Christmas aspects of all of these books. I just wish that the conflicts and stuff were a little bit better. So far out of this video, I would recommend this one if you want to read a Christmas theme book book. I've read these two so far and then I read like 20 pages of this one before DNFing it, which leaves me with the last one that I have, which is So This Is Christmas by Jenna, D. 
Jen by Jenny Holiday. Um, this is the one that's the third in the series, and I don't know if I can just read this one without reading the first two. But I think this one's also the second in a series, and I had no idea. So I think it's the type of thing I could just read. These books are so cute. Like they always start with something like this: 31 days until Christmas. It says Spock's name in the first page. That's so funny. It says change is the essential process of all existence. Mr. Spock. That is so funny. Right there on the first page. I guess I have to read it now. like the writing in this book. I just read like the first page and a half, but I think I might like this book. I I just have a good feeling about the writing, so I'm gonna give this one a try. Hey! This vlog has taken so long to film, but I just filmed the outro to my reading every day at 5 a.m. video, and this morning at 5 a.m. I tried to read, so this is Christmas, and I started this book thinking I would love it because of the writing style, and I thought that they were gonna be so witty and have such great banter because it's a grumpy grumpy, and I've never read a grumpy grumpy romance, and I thought it'd be amazing. Um, and I got to page 83, and the entire plot is about how this American woman woman, woman, is coming to Eldovia, this country that is made up, right? I'm pretty sure it's made up. I tried to Google it, I couldn't find it. It's a made up country and she was gonna fix the government and I read a review on Goodreads that said that this book started to actually feel like a textbook for how to fix a company instead of a romance book and that is exactly the vibe I was getting just from like three chapters. So if the Goodreads review said that, I am confident enough that that's what it's going to continue to be like in the book and I don't wanna read it so I'm taking the bookmark out. I only successfully read two Christmas books. I also did not finish two Christmas books. This is a very interesting turn of events for this Christmas reading vlog. Cringe or binge? I don't know. I was so excited and in the mood to read Christmas books that I don't regret reading them at all. Like even just the few chapters where I was reading them getting excited for Christmas got me in the Christmas spirit a little bit. So I would still recommend reading them for the fun of it all. This one was definitely spicy and I wasn't expecting that. This one was way, way, way less spicy, but still had like a scene. Two pages, I believe. This one was young adult, but I didn't read it. So I'm assuming it doesn't have any. And I have no idea with this one because I did not finish it. So that is my Christmas book review. Christmas book vlog. If you want to see me read them all, go watch my main channel video where I woke up at 5 a.m. every day for a week and I'm reading Christmas romance books. It's gonna be so funny. I feel like there's gonna be dudes who click on that video who expect like a productivity routine life hack video and then it's a girl waking up at 5 a.m. to read Christmas rom-coms. But hey, you girly pops who read, you know what you're subscribed to, you know? Let me know if you read a good Christmas book because honestly, there are still Christmas books on my radar. They're so cute. I'm gonna keep buying them every year and I'm probably gonna keep it a tradition to keep reading them next year as well because this honestly did put me in the Christmas spirit. So yeah, I'll see you on my Instagram story or TikTok or my main channel or somewhere else on the internet. Goodbye!